Hello everyone. Welcome to the session by Proxy Interview Prep. Today we are going to talk about smart pointers. Uh, so before getting into what smart pointers are, we are going to spend some time on memory allocation in C++. So memory allocation in C++ basically works in one of two ways. It's either statically allocated memory or dynamically allocated memory. Statically allocated memory is nothing but memory that is, uh, you know, uh, reserved for a particular variable during compile time. And as you might have guessed, for this the compiler needs to know what size of, you know, what is the size of the memory that needs to be allocated. That is one. Uh, criteria but you know you can always force the compiler to allocate in certain memory during runtime so statically allocated memory is basically uh, again uh, allocated during compile time and dynamically allocated memory is allocated during runtime what i mean by that is when you're compiling your program it the the compiler asks the operating system to reserve a certain amount of memory that is statically allocated and it's allocated for the for the for, for statically allocated variables but uh, dynamically allocated memory is only allocated when the program is run so you need to keep that in mind so here we i have two variables um, one of them is statically allocated the other one is dynamically allocated both are arrays arrays of size 10 they have the same values they don't have the same memory locations but they have the same values so yeah so if i run this code here you will basically have this output they both have the same they both contain the same uh, array values so yeah that is what is printed so the basic difference between these two is that this memory is actually allocated in a memory location actually it's not a, a memory location it's a portion of the disk memory known as the stack the stack basically consists of all uh, statically allocated memory and uh, this memory in turn is being allocated has been allocated in another portion of the memory known as the heap so heap again is a separate uh, portion of the disk memory where all dynamically allocated memory is present so uh, that uh, that is that and uh, now basically we need to discuss what the nuances are what what a programmer needs to take care of while using dynamically allocated memory the thing is when memory is statically allocated the compiler knows when when to deallocate it, deallocate that memory that is when the variable goes out of scope for example this variable here it is con it is in the main function and it will be automatically deallocated once the main function finishes right and i can even try to put this inside you know a scope like this this is known as a scope basically so this dynamically allocated array is uh, alive only inside this scope i cannot access this here so if i do this this would throw an error so i cannot do that so yeah so basically the new and delete keywords that we use are uh, new is for explicitly telling the runtime the operating system to allocate memory during runtime obviously and delete is explicitly telling the runtime to delete certain memory and these in traditional c and c++ implementations this uh, discretion was left left up, left up to the programmer actually so a smart point is actually a very you know sly way i would say around this whole system because in simple programs you don't really need smart pointers you know when to allocate and deallocate memory but when the application is complex enough to you know scale then you need something like smart pointers because you you the programmer cannot predict all life cycles so the programmer need not know when a particular variable when a particular dynamically allocated variable might go out of scope so they might not want to do that uh, take care of that basically uh, and the problem with that is while allocating memory i'll obviously call new because otherwise it's basically null if i don't do this the dynamic array is essentially null so new is not a problem delete is a problem so suppose i forgot to you know delete a particular dynamically allocated memory piece of memory uh, so what is hap what will happen is it will compile fine it will run fine but what this will cause is uh, it will cause something known as a memory leak uh, a memory leak is basically when you don't have access to a certain memory but it's still booked in your name so it's like you know you had a hotel room and you don't have access to that hotel room it's actually a very weird situation but uh, you don't have access to the hotel room but it's still booked under your name so the receptionist is telling you sir you cannot go inside the room you cannot avail our services but we're still going to charge you for it so very funny situation but i guess it does the does the job of explaining what is happening so you're being charged for the room and you don't want to do that but you cannot avail the services anymore also so now what has happened is your happened is your application has actually now quit 
the obviously the operating system garbage collector will eventually deallocate it, deallocate that memory but your application has now quit you don't have any way of deallocating that memory now and it is basically in your present in your disk it is it is there in your ram so you cannot do anything about it so if you forget to delete dynamically allocating allocated memory it will cause a memory leak so and that is a very bad situation to be in because it has it can potentially slow down a very good application so yeah so that was the reason why we needed smart pointers so smart pointers basically just create a wrapper around all of this and tells the programmer that hey you focus on the logic don't worry about memory allocation you have dynamically allocated memory still available to you but you don't need to worry about new and delete in particular people might have different um, you know opinions on this but uh, that is the reason why it, it is being done so there are three smart pointers unique pointer shared pointer and weak pointer so the, all of these three come under the umbrella of you know basically this header and since i've already included the uh, you know this basic this header basically includes almost everything that you might require so i don't really need the memory header but it's good to know that all smart pointers come under the memory header so i've created a simple template class you know does nothing just stores a private just ha contains of uh, consists of a private variable a, a simple constructor simple destructor and a wrapper function to print the uh, private variable so a unique pointer is basically the simplest pointer that you could imagine it's just like the c the standard c and c++ pointers but without the new and delete so it's actually a pretty convenient thing uh, th there is only one limitation to a unique pointer and that is you cannot copy a unique pointer so you cannot assign it to another variable so if i were to de declare another ptr2 and not assign any memory to it and you know then basically just assign ptr2 equal to ptr ptr which is here that would throw a compile error that, not even a runtime error it would throw a compile error because the implementation of a unique pointer has um, consists of basically the copy constructor and the equal to uh, assignment operator as deleted so it does not support these two uh, operate these two things you cannot even overload them so it does not support copy constructors and equal to assignment operators that is one nuance that you need to know about a unique pointer it's a simple scope pointer so in this case i have uh, declared the scope here this these uh, pairs of opening and closing brackets and uh, so this pointer ptr will only be alive inside the scope so if i try to do something like you know, if i try to access the print val function here it would throw an error because ptr has gone out of scope so that would not work and uh, so yeah so there are two ways of creating a unique pointer one of them i've actually listed both of both of them here uh, actually in case of unique pointer it doesn't really matter as much because uh, it's it's at the end of the day it's just a pointer with the new and delete functions you know inbuilt inside the runtime but make unique is just a very cleaner way of doing things i i, I actually don't know what the exact reason is but exception handling is one of the reasons because in production level environment sometimes you might run into exceptions and when a, when you're explicitly allocating memory sometimes that memory might not be deallocated on time so uh, make unique is actually a better way of doing this and actually both of them work both of them work completely fine you will get the same output and uh, everything will work, work fine compilation will work fine and runtime will also work fine but not throw won't throw any particular errors but it just uh, make unique is just a more clearer way cleaner way rather of doing things so that's the unique pointer and uh, use case for a unique pointer is pretty much like you know any other pointer except for when you need to copy the pointer inside you know in another pointer when you when you need to use the pointer a pointer to access memory inside a particular scope and only that scope that's when you use a unique pointer because you know that you cannot use it anywhere else else so to actually deal with this problem deal with this you know uh, not being able to copy a pointer the shared pointer was actually created for this purpose so a shared pointer basically what it does is a uh, shared pointer is allowed to keep multiple references to a to a single memory location it does does this using a reference uh, something known as reference counting so reference counting in its simplest form is basically uh, basically just maintains how many pointers are pointing to the same memory location so we'll basically we'll we'll uh, see what i mean by that so there are again there are two ways to do this do, to declare a shared pointer again uh, same as unique pointer just the function in this case is known as make shared 
सो वन सटल डिफरेंस बिटवीन यू नो हाउ यू डिक्लेयर यूनिक पॉइंटर एंड अ शेड पॉइंटर In case of a shared pointer, it was actually not so much of a necessity to use the make unique function, but in a shared pointer, actually this would also not throw any compile errors. If I comment this out and I you know run this, so this would also not throw any compile errors or runtime errors. But in case of a shared pointer, is it's actually more of you know more than good practice. It's actually more of a, a necessity to use uh, use the make shared function. The reason for that is that a shared pointer actually Declare, declares another control block uh, uh, to you know keep track of the reference count so in uh, in uh, along with the memory that you are actually using the the memory where your uh, object is stored the sample object is stored in in this case uh, along with that is a, it also declares a control block the control block stores the reference count along with certain other things the, it stores the reference count to how which basically just signifies that how many pointers are pointing to that memory location which is why a shared pointer typically has a little you know more overhead as well so you really should not be you know accessing memory like this in case of a shared pointer so uh, since that is cleared out it's good i guess so in this case we actually declared one shared pointer outside the scope to you know explain how exactly the assignment operator would work in this case so use count function is actually just a way of uh, printing the reference count that this mem currently this memory has so now what has happened is i have declared ptr1 but i have not actually assigned any explicitly assigned any memory to it so if i run this program the ptr1 use count in the beginning is actually just zero because i have not assigned it any memory right now then it comes inside the block it comes inside the block at line 35 uh, then at line 37 the pointer 2 is declared at line 38 we print this so now notice this that ptr2 is actually uh, has uh, actually now has a valid memory location assigned to it ptr1 did not have that ptr1 was just declared outside the scope it does not have memory uh, any memory lo it just has the control block it does has a uh, has a uh, it does have a control block but it does not have a, an explicit memory location allocated to it like ptr2 so ptr2 has a control block and as well as the memory location assigned to it and therefore the use count goes up by 1 the initially it might have been zero but once you allocated memory allocated memory for it the use count went up by 1 so now here i printed ptr2 use count before assignment and after assignment before assignment basically means that before you executed this statement ptr1 equal to ptr2 and that's an actually a very interesting thing to note the use count before assignment was actually 1 and after assignment it went up by 1 again so now actually what has happened is ptr1 and ptr2 both point to the same memory location which makes sense to and therefore it makes sense to for the reference counter to be equal to 2 because there are two reference counts now two references to that memory location so once we get out of this this scope here uh, ptr2 dies ptr2 does not have any uh, significance now but the control block and the memory location are still alive because there is one reference still pointing to that location that is ptr1 because we assigned ptr1 to be equal to ptr2 so since the reference count is still non zero the memory location is still alive and i can still you do you know do something like ptr print val because the memory location is still alive now so you come outside the block you you print ptr1 use count and ptr1 use count is now one because ptr2 is dead ptr2 was scoped inside this and ptr2 is dead so ptr1 uh, the use count for ptr1 that memory location is basically now just one and once you know since ptr1 the scope for ptr1 was a complete main function the moment you exit the function the destructor will be called and you know you can virtually think that the use count will go down by one and the memory is deallocated but i don't think there is any way for us to know whether that was actually made as zero but you can assume that you know safely that would be done so a shared what 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 the use case for a shared pointer will be a shared pointer can actually be used in a situation it's actually a more useful uh, case of a pointer than a unique pointer because a unique pointer has very restricted access uh, rules but a shared pointer does not have that you can have as many references to the shared pointer as you want obviously there is a trade off between the overhead for a unique pointer and a shared pointer since the sh a shared pointer requires a little bit of more memory than as compared to a unique pointer a shared pointer uh, has a little bit more overhead as well uh, the 
assignments and the dereferencing takes a little bit more time and especially when you're you know continuously going inside scope and outside scope and there are continuously shared pointers uh, you know uh, in alive in the program then dying and the ref, ref count is going up and down uh, uh, very often in your program the overhead might actually be a lot so that's a simple that's a very normal trade off that you might have to accept so yeah that is the use case for a shared pointer and you know, if you need to pass pass a pointer into a function a shared pointer might be the way to go for so uh, there is another smart pointer known as a weak pointer and and it, by itself it does not actually have much significance it does not actually have any significance a weak pointer is actually just used in conjunction with a shared pointer so basic difference between assigning a shared pointer to a shared pointer and assigning a shared pointer to a weak pointer is that if the weak pointer does not reserve the memory what i mean by that is it does not increase the ref count so if i if we run this program you would see that everything else is the same the practically the whole execution is same and i've just replaced in this file i've just replaced this this uh, you know keyword with this keyword so uh, what the, the change that that has caused is that ptr2 use count after assignment is still one so ptr1 does not reserve the memory so it's you know something like saying that you know i need access to this memory but if this memory if this memory is not required by anyone else i would you know rather not have it so that obviously means that you need to check each time you're dereferencing a weak pointer because that might throw a runtime error and uh, for that we have the expired function so right now you will see that since we just declare ptr1 and we have not uh, you know assigned it a memory location ptr1 dot expired actually equals to 1 which is you know it returns a boolean value so it, this is true essentially then you come inside the block you do everything like in the previous file you assign ptr2 you uh, give it some memory and the use count co- use count goes up by 1 the use count before assignment is 1 the interesting thing is that the use count after assignment is also 1 because ptr1 is a weak pointer and it does not uh, you know uh, increment the reference count so the reference count is same but now ptr1.expired equals 0 because ptr1 is actually pointing to a valid memory location so this is basically false in boolean so that is an interesting thing to note and see once we get out of this scope once we get out of this scope ptr2 dies ptr2 is a shared pointer that is only valid inside the scope which is why ptr2 dies so once ptr2 is dead it goes outside the block and there are no ma- no remaining shared references to that memory location the use count is now zero the destructor has been called so this is another interesting thing to note because in this case when we ran the program the destructor was called right at the end when there were no rem- absolutely no remaining references to the pointer but in this program this is not the case the destructor was called actually before outside block was printed that is maybe somewhere at line 41 when you were exiting the scope the destructor was called immediately then outside block was printed and ptr1 dot expired is again true because ptr1 is again not pointing to a valid memory location so uh, since you know shared pointers individually have a lot of overhead it makes sense to use a weak pointer when you just want access to a, to certain memory but you are not willing to reserve uh reserve that memory for yourself you're okay if that memory is not valid so that might be uh, one use case for a weak pointer so that was it on smart pointers uh, if you have any doubts do ask them and i'll see you in the next session bye bye